The 2021 Kia Sorento is all new inside and out. It has a longer wheelbase, new styling, very much like the Telluride. We'll call it the baby Telluride. It has four engine choices, including hybrid and a plug-in hybrid, and we're going to take it for a drive. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to Car Coach Reports, we give you a lot more than just car reviews. We show you first looks of new vehicles as they come out, and we give you Car Smart so you can save some money because we believe knowledge is power. Make sure to click that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss anything. This is the 2021 Kia Sorento. It is different from the previous vehicle in a lot of ways, and we're going to go through all those different changes, starting with performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating comfort in all three rows. It's going to be tight in that third row. We're going to talk about uh, technology, features, design, quality, and pricing and value. We'll give you cargo space information. In the end, we will give you a Car Coach Reports ratings. The reason we break it down this way is because when you go into the dealership and you're looking at this beautiful vehicle, it's got the X trim and you're all excited, they're trying to sell you on that vehicle. We want to give you information so that when you go into the dealership, you're much more knowledgeable and you know what you're getting. Remember, we're trying to inform you, they're trying to sell you. Let's take it for a drive. The new Kia Sorento has two different drive lines. Both of them come front wheel drive or all wheel drive. The 2.5 liter and the 1.6 liter, since we're driving the 2.5 liter, that's when we're gonna cover. This is all wheel drive from a standing start. That sounds like it's screaming a little bit. That's in comfort mode. Let's stop and try that again. We're gonna move it to sport mode to see what kind of get up and go it has if needed. And the center screen also changes, which is nice. The gauges change. You put your foot in it and it's got much better pickup. Really good, actually. Uh, this is the 2.5 liter. The 1.6 liter is going to be part of the hybrid, so you know it's going to not be as loud. This is kind of loud, in my opinion. I'm actually kind of surprised. It finally kicks down. That's part of the transmission. It's an eight speed dual clutch transmission. It's a wet clutch which for those of you that are into like German cars, you know that's a Porsche, Audi kind of thing. But what's important to note for those of you that are looking at an SUV, you're not looking at performance, you're looking at the ability to get out of your own way. And I think that's also a very important factor. Now there are different horsepower ratings depending upon which application you get. When you're talking about just the 2.5 liter, you're looking at 281 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque. That's 96 more horsepower than the previous generation and 133 pound feet of more torque. What that really means is you buy horsepower, you drive torque. And in the bottom line for that is there's more power obviously in the newer one, but there's also a bigger vehicle that needs to be propelled. Fuel economy is 21 miles to the gallon in the city, 28 in the highway, that's a combination of 24 miles to the gallon. And just for your reference, the 1.6 liter hybrid that's coming out, that's gonna have even better fuel economy at 37 miles to the gallon. And for reference, if you are hauling a trailer, this new Sorento will haul 3,500 pounds. When it comes to performance for this new vehicle, it is an improvement, and in this class, the Sorento earns a nine for performance. The all wheel drive system uses torque vectoring and that provides extra power to the rear wheels. And this is especially important when the conditions are wet. You want good traction, especially with snow, and you'll get that with this all wheel drive system. There's one inch additional of ground clearance and that's important for entering and exiting those steep hills if you decide to take this vehicle off road. For our test vehicle, we had 20 inch wheels. They go between 17 inch and 20 inch depending upon which of the six alloy wheel choices that you choose. I have to say that handling dynamics are improved. It's definitely a better handling vehicle than the previous generation, which was not bad. So if you find a 2020 on the lot, it's not like you're gonna be disappointed. It's just that this is that much more than the previous generation. I think the ride is a bit harsher than the previous generation as well. But then again, this is an all wheel drive vehicle. And when you're driving a vehicle like this, you have high expectations of something that's going to be a luxurious ride. This is a very capable vehicle. And if you want to take it off road to a campsite or, you know, do some sort of hiking, you won't be disappointed. We don't have an NVH rating, which is the noise and vibration level of inside the cabin. It is a bit loud. Uh, although the handling is much improved over the previous generation and the brakes, you can feel boom, stop pretty well. 
overall in this category based on the huge selection of other vehicles that I keep talking about in the category that our competitors are listed down below in the description, it earns an eight. When you put on your right turn signal, you can see what's going on in your blind spot, but that's also true on the left side. This is true on all of the Kia and the Hyundai lineup, and they've done a nice job of helping people understand those different safety features. Also the drive assistance features are right there, which is nice. So you can go into your drive assistance features here and you can get the full list of safety features in addition. So this is your safety features here and you can make your adjustments as you want. Standard for the adaptive safety features are an automatic emergency braking. And that technology also comes with pedestrian detection. So if someone's in the crosswalk, it'll definitely help you uh, stop so that you don't hurt somebody. Of course, that's a big issue. Lane keep assist, lane follow is important as well. So these are your driver features. There is so much adjustment in this car that you really have to read through the, the owner's manual, which a lot of people don't, but it's worthwhile at least getting the walk around from the dealer. Let the guy show you how everything works so that you get the most for your vehicle and what you're paying for it. There's also driver attention warning, lane keep assist, lane follow, a rear occupant alert. When you get out of the vehicle, you'll get a detection, a motion detection. It'll be right here on the dash saying, hey, there might be someone in the car. It's really important that you look before you get out of the car and God forbid you leave somebody in the car or an animal for that matter. Blind spot collision avoidance. Again, that's part of my favorite thing with these turn signals to the left or to the right. We're in a parking lot so I can show you and be, not be driving on the roadway. Automatic emergency braking. Also, if there's a cyclist in the way and you're at an intersection, it'll detect that and will stop the vehicle so that you can keep that person safe as well as yourself. And also one of the newest things they're adding is this passenger safe exit assist. So if you try to open the door, maybe your kids are in a rush to get out to school and they open the door, the vehicle will warn you that there's someone coming, a bicyclist, a person, a car, so you don't hurt them or yourself. That could be really serious. A uh, blind spot monitor available as cross traffic alert. I cannot believe that this is not standard because that's pretty standard on literally everything. Fiat Chrysler products have had that standard for a very long time. Collision avoidance is also important and it will apply the brakes to avoid a collision. So when you put on your turn signal at the stop sign, it'll tell you, hey, if there's anything on the left. Now, one of the things it offers is a collision avoidance that applies the brakes to avoid a collision, and that's really wonderful. There's a lot of safety features on these vehicles, and I'm surprised that you have to buy up on some of them. You would think that everything should be packaged. I constantly am telling the manufacturers, if you're looking at what the Japanese are doing, they're packaging everything, so you get everything you need in safety. And if you're not doing that, a lot of manufacturers aren't. They're seeing that the Germans aren't, a lot of the domestics aren't. You have to buy up. When you have to buy up, in other words, pay more as a line item for safety, or you have to buy a higher trim level, it makes the vehicle more pricey. And that's fine for them, but for you, I think safety should be a standard, and then you buy up all the extra goodies you want, like the heated seats, or a package that's cold weather, or a package that's got an audio system or technology. Those are the kind of things I think that are overlooked on a regular basis. As we drive into the beautiful sunset with this vehicle, and I'll continue driving this vehicle, to get you all as much as I can because this is a really nice vehicle and it is going to be taking a big chunk of the marketplace and the competition is very strong. But when you're looking at safety as a whole, it earns a nine. Visibility is a really important part of safety. You don't think about that, but 80% of your driving decisions are based on visibility. One of the things I notice is this windshield is kind of almost straight up in comparison to some of these long sloping windshields. There's no good or bad to that, but you have to decide that you can see comfortably. It's a nice wide windshield. It has pretty good height to it. And I noticed the window sills are a bit high. That's something that a lot of you may not realize when you sit in the car, people tend to put their arm here. And if it seems like a little bit high, that's because they're now making the window, the sill area higher because they want to make sure that it's safer. It's part of that impact door beam, but it also limits visibility. And for those kids that sit in the second row in booster seats and in safety seats, if they can't see out, then it's not really comfortable for you or for them. In the third row, we'll talk about this in design. There's a unique window that's in the third row, and that's all part of, again, visibility. When you're looking out the back, you can see right there, there are two headrests. Yes, you can fold those down, but a lot of people leave them up if there's kids that sit back there. So keep in mind that you'll have to use the backup camera in that case. And when you do put it into reverse, 
you'll get an around view camera. Now this is the top of the line. So we get the around view camera, we get the backup camera. And these are things that you want to think about. And I do like the around view camera. It has really good clarity because of some of the minor visibility issues with the headrest. This is true with literally every car in this category. It earns a visibility rating of seven. When it comes to seating, this is a very important piece for you. The reason it's important is because this is where you sit in your vehicle, you drive this vehicle, you need to live in this vehicle, and typically you'll keep your vehicle a minimum of three years, and on average up to five to seven years if you buy it. Some vehicles on the road are as old as 14 years old, so some people keep them for the full life. What's important is the adjustments on the seat to make you comfortable, starting with the seat belts. If you have adjustable height seat belts on both sides, that's really good because you don't want that seat belt to cut your neck. You want to adjust it to meet your needs. Just squeeze the button and adjust accordingly. That's great. Now, when you're looking at the seat itself, it has two-way lumbar on both sides. Thank you very much, Kia. You're listening to all of us who have complained about that. The seats themselves have some pretty basic adjustments. This is not a, a sports car by any means, and that's totally fine. One of the things I've noticed, not just with Kia, but I've also noticed with a lot of brands, is the seat cushion on the bottom is short. Now, I tend to be a lot of thigh, so I'm long between the hip and the knee. And if the seat doesn't come to a comfortable area, when you're driving for a long distance, you may not be comfortable. This this is why it's so important to sit in a vehicle seat and get comfortable with it. If it doesn't feel good today, it's not going to get better the longer you own it. So that's also a really important feature to keep in mind. Now they do come three-stage heated, three-stage air-cooled, second row heated as well. And that one touch button that I'll show you in a minute for the getting into the third row is really, really nice. Also good if you get your hands full of something in your going somewhere and you need to have that storage area. So when you're looking at the seats themselves, they're both equally comfortable and that's good when you're switching drivers on a long road trip. Let's take a look at the second row. In the second row, before I sit down, there is a lever here and a button. You press the button and it moves forward so you can get back in the third row. Really good because kids can press it. You don't have to put much effort into it. There's also a button here on the back which does the same thing. Pretty nice, okay. Getting in the second row, there's an adjustment. So you're not too far forward. And you can adjust it forth and back. You can have fun. Don't let kids do this, because they will. I guess I'm a little child. I like the fact that there is plenty of adjustment for your knees, for your head. I th I'm 5'8". I would say if you're six feet tall, you might come pretty close to this roof line. Remember, because it's not a full-size Telluride, you're going to have that limitation. Shoulder space is great. Captain's chairs are an option. That's one of the things that a lot of people like. The armrests are adjustable like they would be anything else. You put them up, you put them all the way down, and you click, 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 move them to where you need them. Other things that are really nice about this vehicle is the cup holders, instead of them being in the center or here where some child might trip over them, they're here in the door uh, along with this really nice material. It's kind of plasticky, but you know, we're in this price point, but I like the fact that they've really done a nice uh, idea with design. I do see there's a little ledge here. I, I see kids putting phones and food and all kinds of stuff on this ledge, but it's nice. There's a pocket here behind the seats, behind both seats, as well as a net, which is really good as well. There are two outlets, one on the side of each seat, which is great, so everyone can charge. Bes below the vents here, there is two more outlets. One's a 12 volt, one's another USB. There's no USB-C charging back here in the second row, but this is great because it's like, oh, Always be charging, ABC. Let's take a look at the third row and we'll give it a rating. Heading back into the third row, I'm gonna press one of these buttons and you can watch the seat move forward. Super easy. Whether it's on the top or on the side, you can get back here into the third row. A little bit low, actually. I find it a little low. Good for little kids. It's, it seems like because I'm all legs, you can see my knees are up pretty high, but Back here, there are more USB, there's more cup holders, more places to put food, snacks, whatever it is that kids want. It is kind of tight back here because it is almost a coupe style design. And that's one of the things I think you have to keep in mind. If you're looking at a vehicle in this price point, in this size category, there's a lot of competition. And if you're bringing your kids with you, which I highly suggest, and you're gonna use the back seat, the third row, have them sit back here, make sure they're comfortable. They're a big part of this decision. And when you're looking at 
the lumbar in both front seats, which is a major thumbs up. The seats are comfortable in the front row. The second row is a little flat, although I do like the creativity of ways to move the seat. Uh, that is really important. But the third row seats are kind of uncomfortable. So overall, we gave it a rating score for seating of a seven. When you're looking at technology, you've got this huge 12.3 inch screen. Standard is a 10 inch screen. You've got your navigation setup and of course, your radios. So they've got the active touch. I really like this kind of like Edison bulb looking uh, design. It's pretty cool. We are driving the X line, which is the SX Prestige all wheel drive. So it includes the around view monitor. And I'll show you what that looks like. That's part of technology you can see. That is the around view camera. Really nice, good clarity too, which I think some people put these on their vehicles and they just have horrible clarity, but this has got really nice clarity to it. It also includes the Bose premium audio, which is a 12 speaker audio system, high performance. And again, this is the 12.3 inch screen. So you've got your radio set up here and an actual volume button, which we all appreciate. You've got your FM. Your AM, your Sirius XM. And in addition to that, you can set up all the different things that you want, whatever screen that you're looking for. Besides Bluetooth and Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, these are pretty much becoming a standard these days. You can set up your user profile, your voice recognition, your device connections, the vehicle information, everything is here. You set it up the way you want it. And of course the Uvo, which has got the wireless connectivity. And that's really nice to have, especially when you're you know, trying to set up things for kids and they want to keep themselves busy. They've done a really nice job with the audio system. And I do like the fact that it has actual buttons for a dial. You laugh, but some manufacturers still have some weird things other than an actual button. And then in addition, you've got your adjustment here for tuning. Again, not every manufacturer has that. Uh, going to the middle, some of the things that you might note is this gauge package looks very similar to that that you see in Genesis There's, and also in the Kia lineup and the Hyundai lineup. And that's part of that shared technology. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that you can play with your safety systems. You can have your navigation set up here as well as your driver information. So they've done a nice job thinking about how do I use this vehicle? It doesn't have a gazillion adjustments and so forth, but they've really done a nice job making it easy to use. The only worry I have is 20 years down the road with all these digital gauges in literally every car, I'm wondering how expensive it's going to be to replace these interfaces. But overall, the technology is good. It's easy to use. It's extremely intuitive. And I think they've done a nice job, uh, even on the maps, which a lot of times you'll find people uh, using these and they're, and they're really, really terrible. This one's not bad at all. But when it comes to technology on this vehicle, as it pertains to the center screens, it earns an eight. There are a lot of features in this Kia Sorento. Pretty much when you're looking at the steering wheel, you're looking at your different modes for all your audio system, volume and adjustment for tuning. And of course your phone and your sound, it can allow you to ask for help. Please say a command. See, it'll ask you to say a command. You can say find gas stations or call John Smith or tune to a coffee house or whatever you're looking for. So that's kind of neat. If you want that, it's right there on the screen in front of you, and that's good. This is the button that you use to change the screens between the gauges. I showed you that in technology. Your, this is your cruise control. This is your active uh, lane keep assist. When you press this, it'll keep you within the lanes, just like it shows. This is the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. In front of you, you have paddle shifters. That's on the top of the line units only. I'm not sure if you'll use it other than if you're going off road. Uh, maybe to your campsite, you've got your wipers front and rear here. And I'll talk about where that rear wiper is in design. So you want to stay for that because it's kind of neat and very well designed. When you're looking at this stock, you've got your lights. And of course, just turn that. It's pretty simple. Boom. And you've got your fog lights as well. Well designed. And all of that is right in front of you when you make a change such as lighting it'll show you so that you know where you are. And I think that's really nice too, because a lot of people don't know that. Over on the left side, you've got your lane departure warning, the ability to adjust your trunk and traction control and lighting adjustments. On the doors, your normal window lifts, mirror adjustments and locks. To the center stack, we've got what we just talked about in technology, real easy to use, extremely intuitive. 
Further down, you've got two vents with all of your controls and adjustments for heating and cooling. Well, I do like the fact that they've kind of gone to these knurled like levers. Really kind of nice, easy to use, especially if you've got gloves on. One of the things I like here is these little teeny vents. These vents are nice because it can blow some warm air on your feet as needed. And that's something that some people like. Going down to the center console, you've got three stage heated, three stage ventilated seats in the front row, heated in the back row. And then of course you've got your USB, two of them, three of them. And this is for wireless charging right here. Really nice and a place to put your things. Your wireless charging pad is right here. And remember there's a lot of different size phones. So make sure your phone fits in that before you purchase this and assume that's what you're gonna use. Going back to your Prindle, as I call it, park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low. This is your Prindle, as I call it, the shifter, park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low is here. Also, you've got two cup holders. I'm not sure why they're square on this side. I mean, I don't know too many square water bottles, maybe Fiji or something like that, but for the most part, they're not. And then of course you got a spot for your snacks or whatever it is you're using. Further back, you've got your different drive modes, comfort, sport, smart, which means it's a combination of that your eco if you're looking for a good fuel economy, and then your snow mode. And this is new, and I really like this. Of course, you've got your four wheel lock too. So if you get into really heavy snow, and I live here in Buffalo, we get heavy snow uh, anywhere in the upper half of the country. It's a nice thing to have. This is your auto off. Everyone that knows me, the first thing I do when I get in these cars is I test it once, and then I shut it off. This is your cameras. That's your park assist, your hill descent, your auto hold, which a lot of people like. That's when you take your foot off the brake at a light and the vehicle doesn't roll forward naturally. And your heated steering wheel, because it's like 30 degrees outside. Further back, you've got a nice little tray here, good for pens or I don't know, whatever it is you're looking for. And then into this really deep center console, except there's nothing in there. There's no charging in there. And is that necessary? No, not necessarily, but it's something that people like to have in case they want to put something in there and charge it. But overall, when you're looking at the features, including this pretty massive sunroof, you can see that opens up every, that's pretty big. That is a huge piece of glass and it's movable, which is not the case in every single vehicle. And there goes the cover. For features, it earns an eight. The design of the new 2021 Kia Sorento really gives you that flavor of the Telluride. All the family starts to look similar, which is a good thing. You've got to create that family likeness. And in this case, it has that tiger front nose. You'll notice a modern look with some pretty edgy cuts in this grill, which I like. And that's really something that makes it look more aggressive. Now there is an off-road version of this car. This is the X line. So it's all wheel drive and it's an XS. So there's a lot of three letter acronyms and a lot of letters and numbers throughout this whole thing. So with the XSP, which has the 2.5 liter engine, this particular one, they all look the same on the outside, but the design in the front of this is really nice. The Kia logo is not too big, not too much in your face. The vents are actually functional, which I do appreciate. And they have a flat silver panel here to sort of accent this look, to make it look more aggressive. Also LED lights are standard and daytime running lights are pretty cool. I'll show you what they look like. That's your turn signals. These are the headlights. There are three projector beams, which are nice, and a DRL right here, which is an optional in LED. The hood also is a little bit different. It has an arched nose on the front. It doesn't lift up that whole front end like we're used to, and it has a more muscular design. The designers have decided to change this look to make it look a lot like the Telluride. There are six different alloy wheel choices running from 17 inch all the way up to 20 inch. And because the test vehicles we get are fully loaded so you can see all the options, this is 20 inch wheels riding on Continental all season tires. The SXP that we're driving is an X line. It says X line here, a little bit of detail, nicely done, very classy, very muscular, long lines. Remember this is a longer wheelbase vehicle. So you're getting more space and more storage. And that's good for the third row as well. As you move your way back, you'll notice there's a roof rack that comes with this, which is good if you're using it off road or you're going on a family road trip, you may need to put a cargo container up there. Further back, there is a unique window for the third row. I like that they made it very distinctive and modern. When you come around to the back, you'll see the tail lights are very much like a Telluride, nice piece of glass. They did something super smart. I talk about this in every crossover and SUV review. Where's the wiper blade? There is one. It's tucked up way up here underneath the wing, underneath that third stoplight, protects the wiper blade life, and it looks cleaner. So well done on that. 
Kia logo. Sorrento is a bit long, spaced out. The head. Good thing the word isn't longer and stretch across the whole back. All wheel drive. And then this is the SXT and then the GD, which is gas uh, direct injected. Uh, down here, you've got a rear diffuser. It is a flat silver and the exhaust pipe is hidden underneath because it's not about performance. It's about a family vehicle. One thing they also just nice is they made this sort of pebbled, the rear bumper, because when you start lifting things over and kids do that, you know, they tend to scratch up the bumper. This will protect the bumper, which is good for resale value. When you're looking at the design overall for the 2021 Kia Sorento, it earns a nine. When you're looking at the quality of the new Sorento, I think they did a nice job with the vehicle both inside and out. Lots of improvements, starting with the fact this is built in the U.S. at West Point, Georgia. I've been to the plant and it's very impressive. In addition, you can see that they own a lot of their own stamping plants so they can control the metal and its quality. And that's important to you for the longevity of that vehicle. Looking at the paint quality, it's nice. The panel gaps are equal all the way around. They did a nice job in balancing that out. And of course, all of the quality components they put on the outside are good. Moving to the inside, it's much more modern, much more detailed, a lot of improved products. I think that based on this price point, you're not gonna see top quality leather. You're gonna see nice quality leather, but you're not gonna see top quality. But when you add in the quality, the fact there's a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty, roadside service is included. Those are big factors to you when you buy this vehicle. How long is it gonna last? Am I gonna get some support from the manufacturer? You do get that with the Sorrento and for that for quality they earn a 10. Coming around to the back you've got about 11.3 cubic feet of storage back here it's not a lot but if you need to haul people that's important maybe get a set of clubs in here or some baby gear depending upon what your lifestyle is. Putting down the third row is just pull that cord push it down very simple when you put the third row down your storage increases but there's a button here and you can put the second row down pretty simply. And now you have 73 cubic feet of storage. Really easy to do back here, especially if you've got your hands full of something or you went to Best Buy and bought a TV or you went to Costco and bought all the toilet paper you could shove in the back of your vehicle. This gives you a lot of storage. Underneath this little cover is the jack and all the hardware and the spare tire is underneath. In addition, there's power outlets here and you can see that they've done a nice job putting this all together. Our test vehicles are typically loaded with all the features so we can showcase them to you to show what's possible. When you're starting at an entry level point of around $29,000, this vehicle is loaded. It's an XS Prestige all wheel drive and it's an X line so you can take it off road. It literally has all the options and everything you could possibly buy. And it came in about $43,900. Now there are some incentives if you are a Kia owner, you can ask for a discount by saying you are a loyal customer. If you're coming from another brand of that long competitor list, you can also see that there is a Conquest discount. If you don't ask for it, you don't get it. And if a salesperson tells you there is no such thing, get a hold of the sales manager or find another dealership. When you're looking at the total price of this vehicle with a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty, when you're looking at a value proposition of the Sorrento compared to that long list of competitors in the category, it earns a nine for value. Now, when you take all 10 categories and you put them together, you start seeing how it compares to the competition. You've learned about the performance and handling and visibility, what it's like inside and out. Remember, you live inside the car, even though you see the outside of the car and so do other people. But when you're living with a vehicle like this, having a good warranty and a good reliability, JD Power has given Kia some really high numbers lately. And you'll also see that customers that buy these vehicles tend to go back to this brand. For a total car coach reports rating, the 2021 Kia Sorento earns an 84. We've driven all the competition. There's a list down below in the description. I put a link to all the different reviews so that you can check them out before you make a decision. I highly suggest you test drive every car that you're truly considering. And then before you buy, check with your insurance company. Your insurance ratings are gonna be different for each car and based on your driving experience and a couple other factors, including your credit rating. And if you've got new drivers, you're definitely gonna see an impact on your insurance.
If you have additional questions or comments on the 2021 Sorrento, put that down below. We will get answers for you because we want to start a conversation with you. We want to start sharing. Did you buy a Sorrento? Are you a huge fan? Did you not? Let us know. The idea is that if we can share this knowledge, it is power. It will help you make better decisions. Make sure to check out our website, Car Coach Reports. We have more information, more car reviews, of course, in English and in Spanish, and also our new podcast, Total Car Score with Carl Brower and Javier Mota. We love talking cars, and if you just want to hear what's going on in the industry, you want to have fun with us, we ask you to join us on all podcast platforms. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like and a share. Tell your friends. We want to open the conversation so everybody learns something. And to get more information, check out my book, Lauren Fix's Guide to Loving Your Car. There's a link down below. You can get it on Amazon. And we appreciate your time, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.